Thank you. Thank you. Well, before I get started, I want to ask you who here has heard of a famous African proverb. It says, it takes a village to raise a child. Everyone in the room, beautiful. Well, we do know it implies that children do thrive when they are nurtured and um, really loved by a beautiful group of people. So, with that in mind, I would like to invite each and every one in the room to come along to a brief journey with me. And please close your eyes. Place both your hands on your heart and just take a deep breath. And uh, relax in your seat. And as you relax in your seat, just feel the rhythm of your normal breath and your heartbeat. Breathing in, breathing out. Now imagine you are a child surrounded by a community of loving people. Hear the sounds of laughter, see yourself playing and listen to the words of affirmation and praise around you. Breathe in and out. Hear the sounds of laughter. See yourself playing. Life seems musical, doesn't it? It has a rhythm that excites you to wake up in the morning and a cadence that murmurs you to sleep at night. Breathe in and out. Mm -hmm. In a snap of a finger, all of that is gone. Now become aware of the world losing its color. The sounds of laughter fading away. There is nothing familiar and nothing feels safe. You may open your eyes. My fellow human beings, what you've just experienced for a second there is the reality of an abandoned child. Today, there are over 153 million abandoned children in the world. And those who survive, the majority of those who survive to become adults will live with sustained trauma, nursing deep-seated wounds and choosing substances of their own choice to numb a nameless pain. Child abandonment is one, if not the biggest, root of dysfunction and suffering in the world. And it does beg one important question, which is, what is something within us that holds the power to change and heal suffering in the world? Is it wealth? Is it power? Is it influence? My name is Grace Harris and I was an abandoned child. Today, I support and help women in their journey of writing, speaking, and leading others so that they can create intergenerational change and heal suffering in the world. And I want to share with you a parable today, the parable of the broken-hearted artist in hiding. So once there was an artist. Um, she loved um, stories and poems and words, and uh, her art was written all over her journals. And one day she had a dream. In her dreams were the potent feelings of love and forgiveness and connectedness and peace. And she was so enraptured by, by this dream that she decided to infuse that with, you know, the dreamy qualities of forgiveness and self-love. And then she went out to the world, started sharing the story. And at first, the more she shared it to those who cared to listen, the more she felt vulnerable and she hated feeling vulnerable. because it was the very reason that she was in hiding. And as you know, as a transformational strategist, what I do is I like to teach women a very simple strategy that I call empowered vulnerability. But then what happened was an army of believers started to come out of the woodwork. People resonated with her story and then they were inspired by her dreamy qualities of forgiveness and self-love. It, eventually, it would turn out that the artist who was in hiding, who was brokenhearted, would heal um, people and create change in the world. Not because she had money or influence or power, but because she was willing to be vulnerable and really experience the true essence of healing 
from the inside out. Tell me, have you ever had a time in your life when you shared a piece of your story to someone and then that someone felt better for it, even when they, you didn't give them any direct advice? Yes? Beautiful. That is the healing power of empowered vulnerability. Because when we share our stories, we heal suffering. And that parable was so true for me because it was really through sharing this book, writing this book, um, where I truly shifted from a state of disempowerment to a divine state of empowered vulnerability. Having said all of that, the challenge for most of us is the fear of vulnerability itself. The fear of being open, the fear of being unprotected and exposed and having to go through the you know, feelings of rage and sadness and sorrow of having to relive and retell the stories of our past. I know I was afraid to be vulnerable. Still am afraid sometimes to be vulnerable. Let me know if that's you as well. It's not always easy. But here is what I've learned. Empowered vulnerability is a heart-centered, heart-activated operation. It is a state of ego surrender. And the only way for the ego to really surrender is to allow the rage, the sadness, the sorrow to come through and out of our system. It is okay to cry, to purge, to scream, to hate if you have to, until your sorrow will bring you down to your knees and nothing will be left except your open heart. And when your heart starts to open, you're really allowing the healing to take place so that then you may go forth and share your story to one person, one day, one moment at a time, because there is no race here. It is not a race, it is a, a way of life. Empowered vulnerability is a way of life. So I want to ask you a question here. Where are you in your journey right now? Are you a um, broken-hearted artist in hiding from the world? Or have you found a healing power of your truth and vulnerability? Perhaps you are somewhere in the middle, wherever you may be. I want to offer you a quote from one of the greatest living spiritual leaders we have today, Miss Marion Williamson. She says, personal transformation can and does have global effects. Because as we transform, the world transform because the world is us. And the revolution that's going to really change the world is ultimately a personal one. And I do agree because empowered vulnerability is not only an act of love, it is also an act of great service. And when we serve one another in love, we go through that personal journey of transformation and then we become the greatest leaders of the world. And so in closing, really, my question remains the same. What is something within us? What is something within you? that holds the power to change and heal suffering in the world. What is your story? Thank you.